In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and my sins, with which I have ever been pleased, and just with the Spirit of the world and the world of God. For I am not a society, and sincerely forgive me, and I pray that you will not have mercy, and for the sake of the Holy Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. to God on high.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading appointed for this day of the Festival of the Holy Trinity is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up. In the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the, six, stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face and with two he covered his feet and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I send me. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I might not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants on his throne. He foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. 
being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you the teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We turn to the Athanasian Creed on page 319 and speak it responsively. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. And the Catholic faith is this. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. 
And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son almighty, the Holy Spirit almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. So the Father is the Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. Thus, there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity and unity, and unity and Trinity, is to be worshipped. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and he is man, born from the substance of his mother in this age. Equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ. ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. All those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire.
we hear again from the text of Isaiah 6. And one seraphim called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah has unclean lips. But lips are not just lips. Lips are what expresses the life. By the words of the lips, the heart is made known. For what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, says Jesus. And that makes a person unclean. Matthew 15, 18. It goes the other way too. A man's lips say, I love you and want to marry you. And by those lips, the woman knows what's in his heart. To have unclean lips is to reveal an unclean heart, a sinful body, a doomed life. So Isaiah has unclean lips. So do we. Woe is me, says Isaiah, for I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. So it's not just that Isaiah himself has unclean lips. It's everyone around him. For Isaiah to have unclean lips, that speaks to his guilt, his own sin. But for Isaiah to live among a people of unclean lips, that speaks to him being covered in shame. To live in the midst of a people of unclean lips is to live in the midst of those who are speaking from unclean hearts, living from unclean bodies, acting and thinking in unclean lives, and when you live in the midst of unclean people, you're covered in shame. That's what it means for us to live in an unclean world, after all, because our neighbor is not separate from us. This world, we can't pretend that we're not part of it. We share humanity with our neighbor. When we see shameful deeds in our society, when we see even simply a boy in tears because he's been bullied, a young woman crying at night because she's been assaulted, when we see the shame belonging to our fellow citizen caught up in addiction or in thuggery or whatever, do we think we're clean of it? Can we separate ourselves from the humans around us without denying that we share in their humanity? The guilt for our own sin, the shame covering us in this world, woe is me, Isaiah says, I am lost. I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And we can say that right along with him. Because we look at the declaration of woe and we see why it's there. He says, woe is me. I'm lost. A man of unclean lips in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And then comes the big hit. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. The guilt, the shame. And then to know that our lives are lived at the face of the King, the Lord of hosts. That's woe in the greatest degree to the sinner. But who is this King? This Lord in front, in front of whom we live our lives. Isaiah 6, 5. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Holy, holy, holy. And the earth is full of his glory. His glory? That's not some lightning flashing out of the sky. It's not the majestic mountains he formed. It's not even the intricacies of the cells he knit together for the human person. His glory? John 1. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. 
The Lord's glory, it is the Son in the flesh, in weakness, walking to the cross. It is Jesus with soldiers spitting on him, priests insulting him, teachers of the law making fun of him, the king and the governor parading him around in chains to bring shame on him, sentencing him to the cross. The glory of the thrice holy God, it is the Holy Father sending his Holy Son to die for the unclean on the cross. It is then, as the Son is resurrected and seated at the right hand of the Father, the Holy Father and Holy Son sending forth the Holy Spirit to those who are unholy to cleanse them with the gifts of the Holy Blood. The glory of the thrice holy God, it is the sinner clothed in the righteousness of Jesus and justified before the throne of the Father. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit. In the church then, this is the day of the Holy Trinity, the church throughout the generations confesses the Athanasian Creed. The Athanasian Creed has been used in the church since about the year 500 AD. It was used obviously to clearly state the Trinitarian faith, emphasizing the incarnation of the Son. In the early church, as also now, there were many teachers of heresy, teaching that the Son was true God, but not true actual man, or teaching that he was true man, but not true actual God. These heresies end up, of course, destroying the gospel of Jesus Christ crucified for the justification of the sinner. For if Jesus is not true man, he does not share in our humanity, does not take on our human guilt, and is not clothed in our human shame, and thus cannot save us by his death. Or if he's not true God, then his death on the cross is merely the death of a man and is not taken up into eternity and presented to the Father as the atoning sacrifice for all sinners of every generation. So the Church in the Creed gives clarity to the confession of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to the confession that the Son is true God and true man for the justification of the sinner. And then in the Creed we close with saying, this is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. This is, of course, before the Catholic Church of the Pope was around. We can remember that the idea of the Pope sitting in primacy over the Church had not been decreed until the year 1049 at the Council of Rhymes, but that's over 500 years after the Athanasian Creed. So in the Creed, we confess the Catholic faith along with the early church in the way that Catholic was understood. After all, that's what the Creed is about, the doctrine of the Trinity as the apostles have delivered it to the church. The doctrine of the justification of the sinner who is now saved by faith, and that is Catholic. That's the Catholic faith we confess. It is that the Holy Son, true God and true man, sent forth by the Holy Father, redeems the sinner, redeems us with his own blood. The Holy Father and Holy Son have sent forth the Holy Spirit that, so that the Holy Spirit gathers the unclean ones into the church. If you're not unclean, there's nothing going on in the church for you. But if you're unclean, then that's where the Holy Spirit gathers you and cleanses you with the word of gospel, with the washing of baptism, and with the body and blood given to the sinner to eat and drink for the forgiveness of all sin. This is the Catholic faith by which the sinner is saved. By this faith, unclean lips are made clean. For the lips now speak the confession of the heart cleansed by the gospel. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs.
Holy, 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 O Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is full of your glory. You created us and all things. More wonderfully, you have given yourself to redeem your fallen creatures. Defend your holy church throughout the world that she be kept in your salvation and faithfully confess you, the only true God, and your doctrine, Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, grant purity of doctrine to the Holy Church throughout the world. Preserve your church from all false doctrines and all false liturgies. Bless our synod and its districts with the unity of faith that we may be strengthened in this faith among us and we may live together in peace. Give our congregations to be places where your word is faithfully planted, that your gospel be joyfully proclaimed to gather a bountiful harvest of the faithful, Lord, in your mercy. Only begotten Son, in your love, you became man, living a perfect life in our place and taking on our sin so that we might be clothed with your righteousness. Keep our eyes fully fixed on you alone, that all the riches and cares of this world may not seduce us from your peace, Lord, in your mercy. Spirit of truth, in this broken world of sin and death, you are our comforter. Give eternal life in Christ through the new birth of holy baptism's promised water and spirit. Give fathers and mothers, family, and all the faithful to encourage the baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, that they may hold fast to the life you give now and forever, Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, uphold those given earthly authority, including Joseph, our president, Michelle, our governor, and all given public office. Let them rightly carry out their offices to defend the unborn and the weak and to bring justice to those who do violence. And especially on this weekend of our national holiday of Memorial Day, let us give thanks and do honor in remembering those who have given their lives in defense of nation. And do respect also to those serving in uniform now. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you healed many during your earthly ministry. Give healing now, according to your will, to all those sick or hospitalized, including Sonia, Laura, Diane, Carol, John, Elaine, Nancy, Evie, Shannon, Kylie, and Logan. Let us speak the light of your word to them and compassion, compassionately stand with them in the time of trial, Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, protector of your people, visit with kindness all who are homebound and unable to come to the public assembly of your saints. Attend to them with your gospel, dwell with them, with your gifts of word and sacrament, that they may know that they are one with your Son and with his holy people, the Church. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Spirit, drive out our selfishness and smallness of heart by your word of forgiveness. In the feast of Christ's body and blood, give us love for one another, for our families and our neighbor. Give reconciliation of your gospel and especially give us love for the poor, the hungry, and the unemployed. Bless all who work to lighten the load of those living under great burdens, Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, since you have given husband to the wife, wife to the husband, and parents to the children, bless all families with peace, wholeness, and joy in you. Where there is enmity, speak your word of unity. Where there is brokenness, give your healing. Where there is guilt or despair, speak your word of absolution and joy. Where sin, speak your forgiveness. Where aloneness, bind together as one, even as you are in oneness with your Father, Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, we give thanks for your gifts to us of body and soul, eyes, ears, and all our members our reason and all our senses, and for your continual care 
before us in our daily lives. Let us joyfully use these gifts to bestow, as you bestow upon us, to make us servants of your church with our time and talents. And let us rejoice in being your servants to our neighbor, Lord, in your mercy. O holy triune God, you live eternally in concord, three persons, yet one God. Unite all who commune on Christ's body and blood, that they receive him in faith for forgiveness, joyful, joyfully confessing unity in your truth. Receive our thanks for all who are with you in heaven, including Roger, the brother to Roe, and give cheer to all who mourn with the hope of the eternal feast, Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord. In the confession of the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity and substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul and through life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O oh God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bless we the Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. For announcements, I haven't been handed anything in addition to what's in the bulletin. There is a, uh, you may notice a bulletin board kind of thing back in the narthex. For any of you interested in where things stand with P&M and, and their desire to put the, the big electrical poles out in front of our church and all of that, and for the action that's happened somewhat after that, take a look on that bulletin board. Or um, Joel, there he is. Right up, right up at, at his usual place. Um, just check with Joel's up where he might be able to give you more information too. Uh, so I think that's it for announcements. We are back on the regular schedule. So as you leave the Lord's service, if you're able, um, you can stop by and have coffee and other things prepared back in the fellowship hall and a good time to get to speak with our fellow members. And then, of course, the Bible class and Sunday school hour. So I think that's it. We do want to welcome any guests that we have with us. I know that we have guests from Texas and Nebraska and elsewhere. I've been told we even have a group of four brothers who are on vacation going, taking the uh, route of Route 66. Um, so you can try to figure out who they are. <laughs> I, hope, I hope I'm not in trouble. Actually, um, one of them is Pastor Mark Bars. He has been here before. He joins us sometimes for our um, seminar in the summer, so some of you may have, may have met him. But I think that's it. We do want to welcome any guests with us, and it is an honor to be with you at the Lord's name. And now let us go forth in our Lord's name.